Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is another in my RHCSA practice session series where I'm taking one of the exam objectives and going through it as I would if I was preparing for the RHCSA exam. Remember these videos aren't necessarily intended to be authoritative information, though I do try to keep the information accurate. The objective that we'll be looking at in this video is under the Operate Running Systems Objective list, and that is Adjust Process Scheduling. Before we dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do. So without further ado, let's dive into Adjust Process Scheduling. So I've already logged in here as root on my CentOS system, and I've also installed the Apache web server, because that's what we'll be using with our example in this particular video. I do want to talk about uh, process scheduling just a bit, and before I, I really get into it, I, I do want to say of the various objectives of this exam, this is what I've probably had the least amount of experience with. I understand pretty well conceptually what's going on, but just in the work that I've done with Linux systems, I haven't had to like, manually adjust the scheduler that certain processes use. Now, if you out there watching this have worked with process scheduling a good bit, feel free to put some, leave some comments on the video about scenarios where, where you've had to actually adjust these things. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing to adjust them, but it would be something that I would suggest not doing in a production environment unless you, you A, have a reason, and B, really know what you're doing. This, um, working with the process scheduler and such, this is getting into more fine, um, fine grain system tuning. But for the exam, I believe the goal of Red Hat for having this particular objective here is to know how to do it. So if you're in a situation either you know in production or in the exam and you have the directive of change the process scheduler for Apache to be first in, first out. Well, even though you might not know the exact technical details of you know why your boss or manager has told you to do this, you need to know how to do it. And I think that's the, the important thing for the exam. So that being said, the tool we're primarily going to be using is the CHRT tool, which I believe stands for change real time. So let's do CHRT dash dash help. And what this shows us under policy options are the different schedulers that we can use. The FIFO and RR scheduler, from what I gather, those are your, your real time schedulers. And this idea of real time, I believe, deals with latency for processes. There are some applications, and uh, one I can think of off the top of my head, or applications used for music recording, where often you want to have the least amount of latency possible. And so I could possibly see those applications needing to run with these particular schedulers to where you you have that as close to zero latency as, as you can get. Again, if you're more familiar with this, feel free to leave comments if I have stuff wrong. I want to try to be as accurate as I can, but understand that this isn't something I've touched all the time, and I'm really more focused on using the tool itself. Now, what we'll do with HTTPD is let's see which scheduler these processes are using. So we'll clear the screen, and what I'm going to do for this is actually do a little mini script here, and I'm going to do 4i in, we'll do a subshell of pgrep httpd. So what pgrep is going to return are all the process IDs for httpd. We're going to loop through those and do chrt-p, which if you just do the dash p, it's actually going to give you the um, scheduler that the process ID that you feed it is using. And then we'll do done. All right, so all of these are set to use the schedule other, which from what I have gathered is kind of the any given process, you'll probably be in schedule other, unless you have something, some like system process or something that you have explicitly said put into another scheduler. If we did have a need to put HTTPD into another scheduler, let's say that we needed for whatever reason to put Apache into the first in, first out real time scheduler, the way we would do that is chrt dash f for the particular scheduler then dash p again but we have to give it a uh, priority first and i know for fifo i think it can go from 1 to 99 where i believe 99 is the 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 best of the priorities but we'll just do 10 here just as an example and then we'll feed it a process id so we'll just do for this example 3495 we didn't get any kind of error. And so if we were to check just 3495 again, we see that it is now in schedule FIFO or first in, first out with the priority of 10. 
you would do the same kind of thing if you wanted to change it back to schedule other, which I think is dash O, but let's check the help just to make sure. Yep, dash O, and I think I do have to actually tell it a priority of zero for that. So let's try it without just to see what happens, and then we'll try it with. Use the up arrow here. So we'll do dash O and the process ID. And it did not change, it stayed with FIFO, so I think I do have to feed it the zero priority. All right, and let's check the process ID again. And now it's back to schedule other. One thing to remember for the exam is everything you do has to survive a reboot. And using the CHRT command, from what I have seen, does not survive a reboot. For example, if we had left that one process ID at uh, 3495, or the process ID 3495 at the schedule FIFO, and we restart the HTTPD service, obviously we'll get new process IDs, and those new process IDs are going to be using the schedule other. They are not going to use schedule FIFO. So in my research, the one method that I found to be able to make this persist is by altering the configuration of a services unit configuration file itself. Again, if you have more experience with this, feel free to leave comments on other ways to make this persist. But if you're in a situation where you needed to have HTTPD always use schedule FIFO, this is one way, I think, to be able to make that happen. So let's go into the user lib system or system D, I believe, system. Yep, and we should have a, tar a service for HTTPD. And it looks like, yes, we have, we have a few things. So HTTPD.service. I'm gonna vim into that. Usually I use VI, but I'd like to see some pretty colors this time. And there are two directives we're gonna to add to this unit configuration file that will make it use the FIFO scheduler. So we'll go into insert mode, and the first is CPU scheduling policy FIFO. Now you can also feed that the other scheduler, the batch scheduler, idle, RR as well. But again, for this, we're doing FIFO. And then if we wanted to give it a priority, we would do CPU scheduling priority equals 10. That's the same as what we did on the command. Now, one thing to think about this, um, spelling and such counts. When I was doing some of the testing of this, I had my keyboard for whatever reason registered two C's instead of one when I was spelling scheduling. And that would not prevent HTTPD service from starting, but what it did was just use the standard scheduler that, that it always uses, and, and it ignored these two directives that, that had misspellings in it. I believe these look correct. So we'll close the VI file and save it. Next, we're gonna do systemctl daemon reload. It's because we've changed the unit file itself and we need to make systemctl aware of that. And let us restart HTTPD. All right, no errors there. Let's make sure that it's up. And it is up, so let's do our little for loop again. So for i in subshell pgrep HTTPD do change real time dash p and we want to give it the process id and done and all of these processes are using the schedule fifo so the way that we know that it's going to survive a reboot is the fact that we went ahead and restarted the service and we know that the service is enabled just from how we installed it so that will save you a little bit of time on the exam versus having to reboot your environment to see if it worked so again, this wasn't really much of a deep dive at all into the actual process schedulers and such. I think that's beyond the scope of the exam and certainly is beyond the scope of my expertise in process scheduling. But the goal is to know about the actual tool itself, which is the CHRT tool, how to use it. And then here's an example of if you had an objective to set a service to always use a particular scheduler and a particular priority, how you can alter the unit configuration file for that. So as always, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure that you click like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Ring the bell when you do. And I do want to again thank returning subscribers for watching yet another video. Feel free to leave comments, ask questions and such. I will answer them as I have the time and ability. And I will see you the next time.